what are the benefits of focusing on the morality of Jesus? For unbelievers who are concerned about the negative impacts of Christian religion in the world, I would think publicly ridiculing the immoral and abusive cultic teachings of Jesus is a straightforward, prudent warning for people of all stripes to stay away from Christianity. Also, you don't have to worry about the million differences between Christians if they all have to bow down to Jesus as clearly portrayed in their holy books. It, simpl it simplifies that game by just focusing on the many misbegotten teachings of Jesus. There are some curveballs, sure, but once those are solved, merely defending by description about what is being said and taught is mostly a straightforward endeavor. It also completely disempowers Christian critics as they can't appeal to the Bible harder than you already are. Many Christians want to say that Christianity isn't a religion, but instead a, quote, relationship with Jesus. They do this to avoid all the negative connotations that are popularly associated with religion. Regardless that just about any other religion can be reframed in a similar way to equally uncompelling effect. This book basically says, okay, well, let's deal directly with Jesus and see how that actually goes. There's no place to fall back to after that if Jesus has some serious issues or is hopelessly evil. Also, focusing on the morality disempowers Christians who want to make everything about morality. Underlying much of young earth creationist arguments, for example, over biology, are genuine existential fears about the meaning of life unraveling to nothing. I'm sorry that I can't grant comparable, replacement, secular, absolutist, existential meaning and security, but I do know that it's not really about morality if they don't accept their own morality, or if they're caught credulously defending blatantly evil teachings. And if it wasn't real, then you didn't really have that level of existential security to begin with and have so only lost an illusion. And even liberal Christians shouldn't be able to pretend like there's much good in Jesus' teachings, even as a metaphor. If the moral of an admittedly fake story is bad, then odds are that it's necessarily a bad metaphor, too. Deriving hidden virtuous meanings from evil stories is most often a fool's errand. There's no free lunch here. Even the Calvinists, who accept most everything as is and attempt to call it good, won't and can't accept everything as is. Something in this book and video series likely addresses every type of Christian belief out there, so merely accurately describing Jesus' teachings could theoretically end modern Christianity. But this requires having a really efficient command of the text, and that's where this book and video series hopefully come in. Hopefully it serves as a good primer for effectively condemning the teachings of Jesus and therefore Christianity in general. The truth is, nothing makes these conversations easy, and many different approaches may be more or less equally good. Different approaches reach out to different kinds of people and at different times in their lives. Not everyone is ready for everything at every point in their own development as a person. And criticizing Jesus' teachings may well be the last thing you ever want to do with a given individual. I can't solve all your communication problems, because no one can. Ending the cultural prominence of religion in the United States will mostly consist of mainstream conservative Christian religion continuing to self-sabotage with various scandals from different major denominations, and by continuing to push unpopular morality contra the LGBTQIA communities, continuing to promote various anti-science positions, and especially abominable doctrines like eternal damnation, which may easily strike even the shallowest tourist of theology as cruel and archaic. Secular folk who want to aid in that trend will, will likely be most served by aiming their efforts at things like universal health care and comprehensive social safety nets generally, as well as providing comprehensive alternative secular culture that is sufficiently developed, built to last, and speaks intimately to the human condition. It seems that a-religious attitudes, especially in, in Europe, correlate best with a population feeling generally secure in life, and winning cultural wars requires positive culture to rally behind and ultimately live by whereas religion tends to require fear and uncertainty to get traction and maintain. Books like mine and video series like these are largely for the niche demographic of ex-believers who need an extra helping of intellectual tools and answers in their transit to complete non-belief land. But the internet is still the place where religion comes to intellectually die most especially, and this book and video series is a contribution to that cause.